there comes a time in every person's life when you realise it's not about doing what you are told, but doing what you know is right for you. Let us take a journey of learning and discovery with the world's most successful people who are living the life of their dreams, walking through life using their inner wisdom and being of service to others. Forget exams, grades and test scores. What is your purpose? As we let go of what we think should be and learn from our elders to gain knowledge, inspiration and a true sense of who we are. What are your dreams? Does your life have meaning? Are you living a life of significance? Let's talk with today's guest. Hello, my name is Mark Taylor and welcome as we spend some more time together on the Learning on Fire podcast. Today I'm talking to Dr. Martha Saunders. Hi Martha, thanks for joining me and let's explore the journey of who you are. I'm glad to be here, thank you. So people will hear from the accent that you're not UK based. Um, can you give us a little, <laughs> bit of a, a little bit of a background in terms of where you are in the world and, and exactly what it is that you do in life? Well, I'm, a, I'm a southerner. I live in the United States. I am the president of the University of West Florida, which is one of the 12 universities in the state of Florida. And you've got a long history in terms of education and uh, and philosophy within that education. Can you um, give us a little bit of an idea about that? Because um, our young people listening and their parents will be really interested in terms of, of how that fits in with the sorts of education system, which I know you've had a lot of impact in creating over there. Well, I've been in higher ed for more than 30 years, higher ed leadership in more than 30 years. I uh, came into higher education relatively late in the game. Uh, I was in my uh, late 30s before I joined uh, University World. Uh, But prior to that time, I had spent time as a high school teacher. Uh, I taught uh, journalism and language arts in high school as well. So I've taught in public schools and I've taught at universities. And for the last uh, couple of decades, I have been in leadership at a university. And what is it about actually being in that sort of authority position that you're able to sort of embed through, through the organization, which you think really gives it a chance to shine? Well, I think you know, the leader always, the president in particular, uh, we're the, the head cheerleader. We beat the drum. We set the pace. Uh, and I think the enthusiasm that the leadership has is going to catch uh, with the rest of, of the campus. And or, or to put it another way, if the leader is not excited about what mm-hmm. they're doing, no one else will be either. Absolutely. And, and have you found it takes a number of weeks, months, years for that sort of to filter through to all the members of staff and all the people on campus? Or or is it something which you think you can galvanize relatively quickly? I I think it's relatively quick. I think that, uh, and I've been president, this is my third presidency, and uh, people are hungry for leadership. Uh, when a new leader comes, they want to know what they're all about. They want to know what they're, what they're going to do to them. <laughs> you know, is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? Uh, but I have always found that they give uh, the leadership a chance to uh, lay out their vision, and they either uh, jump on board or they don't. And I've always been very fortunate that people uh, have been happy to say, well, let's go that way for a while. And I think this conversation is going to be really, really interesting for especially the young people listening to sort of get that sort of behind the scenes insights into into what it's like in, in education from from that leadership level. Because I know it's not always something which you sort of hear in that sort of more personal understanding. So I think it's going to be a, yeah, an intriguing conversation. I hope so. So what does your life look like now and how is it different from when you were growing up? Well, I, I grew up in a small town in, uh, in, the, in the deep south of the United States, and, uh, but I also grew up in a town where I felt very connected, and my dad had uh, several brothers, and I was always not far from an uncle, so I never worried about, you know, forgetting my lunch money or, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> or if I had a flat tire when I was a teenager, someone would come and help me. Uh, but now, and so I grew up feeling connected, but it was to a very, very small world. Now I feel connected on a much grander scale, partly, be, uh, well, mainly because of the experiences I've had uh, at, uh, at a university and also just experiences 
I've had in life. I'm a lot older now, and uh, and I've been lots of places and seen lots of things, and I've seen work done on very different models and still getting done. And I think that that's been incredibly illuminating and inspiring. I love sort of that essence of, of that sort of community feel, both in terms of family and, and you certainly get it within campuses of, of colleges and universities and schools. Um, how do you feel sort of the technology and information age is sort of um, adapting to that? Because it is online and it is virtual, but I think there is also that personal connection that goes on within all these things as well. You know, I think that social media in particular has been extremely helpful in helping people reconnect who might have, and so there's been a real benefit there. But I think at the end of the day, I've found with my students, even if they're taking online classes, I found with people who are extremely active in social media, they want to sit down one-on-one uh, with a cup of coffee and and look people and really, you know, engage with folks and, and watch the nonverbals in the give and take. And so uh, people are still people, and uh, and we're still hungry for for human companionship, uh, and not necessarily over a screen. Yeah, I agree, and I, I've, I've been involved in a number of online um, memberships and learning environments, and, and I've loved them all. It's enabled to, uh, the world to open up for me in something I'd never be able to do face to face on a daily basis. But the thing which has been the highlight of all of these is when these organisations or people have actually created live events where we can actually say, like, say, go and sit around a table together, have lunch, have coffee. Yeah have those conversations about what we've been learning and what we've been doing and, and and essentially we are human beings wanting to have that community essence like I say it's face to face that's right what was valuable about your school experience and I guess that could be but both in, in terms of your um, going through as a pupil but having had all that experience going through as, as a member of staff as well feel free to to share anything about that which you think is has been valuable to you over the years well, certainly as a student, uh, you know, school experience gave me uh, a sense of order and discipline and uh, and breadth of knowledge that uh, that you wouldn't have otherwise. And I did notice as I uh, as I was working on my doctoral uh, degree, it required me to weigh other things in my life against that doctorate. Uh, uh, for example, I had uh, children at home, and I was working madly on my dissertation, and I remember making a conscious decision that my children and I had come too far together for me to throw them away now, <laughs> and uh, and I wasn't going to, I was not going to be all consumed by that project, and I did not, uh, I, I did not work over weekends on it. I, my weekends were for my family and uh, maybe others might make a different decision. Uh, it took me a little longer than it would have if I had had all the time in the world. But it, it when you're in in a situation like that and you start weighing it against the rest of your life, uh, you come out with some rather uh, interesting revelations. And I, I see that almost that same pull uh, in in our students you know they they have lots of opportunities but they don't want to give up life <laughs> just uh, just to you know to move ahead in their careers and so you have to you know and and I think that's what education does for you and that's what life and academics does for you it opens lots of choices and then you decide which ones you want to take yeah, I think that's a really important fact. I think the fact that you get to choose, because you're right, it's, I mean, it's really interesting hearing it as an adult being able to say, I'm not working at the weekends, family is really important. I think it, it could be tricky if you're a younger person thinking the same thing. Like you say, you know, you've been at school all week, you've got lots of homework, you've, there's lots of um, responsibilities these days within the system to about your learning in terms of, of those extracurricular things as well. And actually to to have enough confidence in yourself to know what is okay for you and what's important outside of those academics, but also to understand the responsibilities and the opportunities you've got while you're immersed in that sort of learning environment. And I, and I think that sort of personal element is really, really important. It is. It is. 
Which teachers do you remember and what was it about them that had that sort of impact? Yeah, I think it's, it's kind of interesting. I can remember every one of my elementary school uh, teachers, you know, when I was six years old and seven years old. And then uh, and they all had and the impact was caring. They were all women, uh, which was very commonplace at the time. Uh, they were uh, organized and uh, seemed to care that I learned. And uh, and so I felt very nurtured by them. And then middle school, which is more, you know, the young teen years, was just a blur, and I can't remember any of them. So I think that probably said more about puberty and the <laughs> and the you know the mania that goes around that yeah, than whether they were good teachers or bad. And then you know in high school uh, and in, in college and university, I remember the tough ones, <laughs> you know, the, the ones that were uh, that demanded more than I thought. I was capable of giving, but yet I did. Those are the ones, and and they weren't. Uh, they were so. They weren't impossible, but they just expected the best out of me. And what is it about that kind of feeling you think that really um, speaks to you as a younger person? Because it, it's something which has come up before, and I think that those teachers that are really able to kind of have that. Um, I, I guess connection with you to want to draw out and really challenge you but in a way that's inspiring rather than in a way that can be defeating I guess that that's the real art isn't it of those great yeah, teachers it, it is the art and and not just teachers but coaches and uh you know other people who in, in levels of influence with young people and you really hate them at the time you do, you do not appreciate it uh, because they're so hard and, and it's something you're so out of your comfort level and they're, they're demanding things that you didn't think you could do. And, but then when you do them, uh, you're very grateful. I, uh, when I was working on my master's degree, I had a professor who really just I probably led the charge at rebelling against him. <laughs> he was just so impossible and was demanding so much of our time. And, and, and graduate students, you know, don't have a lot of time and they sure don't have a lot of money. But uh, I remember years later calling him back, calling him and saying, I just want to let you know that I was probably the biggest complainer in your class. And today I am so glad you pushed me because it, you know, the project you had us working on made the difference in my career. Uh, and they have, to, and he laughed and he said, you know, I get a lot of calls like that. <laughs> so he, he knew he was being, uh, pushing us, you know, almost beyond endurance, but we were better for it. And so it, it is an art because it's not a matter of just being impossibly hard. It's a matter of being able to gauge what they're capable of doing and not settling for anything less than the best your students can give you. Yeah, and what, and what a great thing to set, isn't it, for those people who are continually learning, as we all are, all the way through our lives. And I think to have that is a is a is a demonstration of what's possible is such a it's such an incredible gift to have and a learning experience like I say w without sort of despite what subject it happens to be or, or what the sort of the, the nitty-gritty is of that particular subject indeed who did you admire when you were young and what was it about that person that had such an impact uh, well you know really if, if, as a teacher my music teacher I took piano and voice uh, for 12 years, uh, and she was uh, just the classiest lady. <laughs> she had uh, she had gone to conservatory uh, in our small town. She was unique for that level of, of education, and um, she was infinitely patient. Uh, and but every lesson, and that was once a week for uh, an hour or two. She was always immaculately dressed, beautifully coiffed, you know, just this uh, very, she, she, the, the example of everything she wanted me to be. Uh, she never wavered. And I'm sure uh, it, it probably wasn't a lot of fun to spend, uh, you know, her days with 
you know, students who may not have practiced all that they should and may have had uh, mixed feelings about mm-hmm. even being there. And, uh, but she never wavered. Uh, and she was the person she wanted and the performer that she wanted me to be. And uh, I and I just can't. Every time I think about that influence, uh, I think about her, her attention to detail. She was focused. And I don't know that I've ever been able to to be there, but I have always tried to be that person as well. Yeah, I love that leading by example, like saying, just epitomizing what you're able to get across, which could be nonverbal. And and like you say, I mean, as a as a professional musician myself and a, and, a, and a music educator, it's it's interesting when you're doing lesson after lesson after lesson sometimes, and there there is a certain. Uh, I guess ability to be able to have yourself at the center of it to then be able to give to your pupils and I think that that sounds very much like that was the sort of person that she was in terms of how you show up from like say from how you dress to how you appear and how you how you turn up emotionally to those things like say with all those different types of students in different places well she set the example and uh and that is when I think of of my time as a teacher, but also as a, you know, as a leader of an organization, I, I try to set by example because, you know, if <laughs> I can't ask what I don't give. That's very, very true. What was the best piece of advice you've ever been given and who gave it to you? Professionally, uh, I was uh, a dean uh, at a university, uh, happy at what I was doing, And one day over lunch, uh, the president of the university just happened to be in the, you know, we all ate in the cafeteria and he and I were the last two people at the table. And he was one of those people who always took a lot of interest in his mid-level managers. I guess that's what I would have, would have been. And he said some complimentary things about, um, my work. And then he said, you might want to think about being a president. And I, you know, I said, oh, you know, hush, you know, I don't believe that. <laughs> and, uh, but he said, no, really, you, uh, you would be. And this is where the advice came in. He said, but we've taught you all we can teach you here. And you've got to go some other places and you've got to learn some other things. And that was about the most generous advice I've ever gotten because within six months I was gone and he lost a good dean, but yet he, and it made all the difference in the world in my career because I did go some other places and I did learn a lot of other things. uh, And that made all the difference. And do you think you would have naturally gone anyway, but I guess it might've taken a little bit longer or do you think that really opened up a whole new world to where you thought you might be heading? Well, it it really opened up a whole new world. And I've always been lucky that I've had encouragers. And so that was just, you know, well, a five minute conversation. Uh, but it was a word of encouragement that that opened up the doors. I might have gotten there later, but I, I probably would have done so out of frustration and not so much out of encouragement. Like, well, I don't like it here. I'm going to go somewhere else. But uh in this case, he said, you could do this and you need to think about trying. It's really interesting, isn't it, sometimes when I mean, that, that particular type of conversation just shows how other people perceive you and where they think your life is going and the opportunities that you can take them. And that can be so different to where to where you are. You, you might be in the position of I'm, I'm now at school or I'm now going to college and I'm not quite sure where I'm heading and what yeah. I'm doing or you know I, I'm a teacher and I've actually been here and I can see myself being here for many years but to someone to sort of see you already on a journey or a path that you can't perceive I think is such a wonderful gift. Well it really was a wonderful gift and it's something that it's so easy to do uh, if you see if you spot something positive in someone say you know I think you're doing really great (laughs) and you might want to think about uh, the next level up and um, they don't have to take your advice, but to even say it, I think is such a lift for people. Uh, And, uh, and it encourages our students that they can, because 
you know, students by and large are, are fairly provincial. Uh, they haven't seen the big world. They haven't, um, they certainly haven't lived it because they're too young. <laughs> and so to be able to connect them to something bigger than they've ever seen is, is really what we're here to do. Yeah, I think I think that's amazing. I, I really do, and I, and it just it also always reminds me about always say the thing that you you feel you want to. If it like you say, if it's a positive thing, if it's a way of encouragement, if it's just pointing out something lovely that's happened or something great that you you're able to produce, because I think it's very easy to have those conversations in your head, but it makes such a big difference to the person you can actually tailor it to. A- absolutely, and and I try, and it it makes. A world of difference in in other people's lives and what advice would you give your younger self now <laughs> oh dear <laughs> <laughs> I think I would tell her uh, Missy as it turns out you don't know everything <laughs> <laughs> and I would also advise her to ask for help uh, you know as a young person uh, I, I really was disinclined to say, I really don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, how do I, you know, uh, I need some help. I felt like I needed to know everything. And as a, a in leadership in particular, I was uh, averse to calling for help. And I would, I would eventually figure things out for myself, but I certainly went through a lot of angst before I did. So... That that was a hard hard lesson, but one that I uh, I still struggle with from time to time. But I don't mind picking up the phone now and saying I am really in a mess and I need a little help. Um, people sort of often say that asking for help is a sign of strength rather than weakness, or people wanting to sort of you know expect that you know everything. Or do you think that's the case, or do you think actually it's just one of those things? Just don't do it the hard way if you don't need to. Just just ask because it could just set you off you know of a five minute conversation might save you hours you know well I, and I don't know about others I think that it just never occurred to me that help was out there uh, I, I've always been fiercely independent uh, and I think you know the flip side of that is you're kind of on your own <laughs> and, mm. and uh, so it, it didn't I never thought well there's someone out there that I could call and and get some advice i just sort of thought i was supposed to uh figure it out and uh turns out i was wrong <laughs> I, I think one thing that i always try and remember and, and it and like you say it can sometimes be very hard and you have to have this conversation or have a conversation with myself about this a lot is is to kind of flip those conversations around you know what it's what's it like when someone comes to you and asks you for advice or help and you're able to put them on a path which sets them in whatever it is that they're doing and that always feels fantastic so it, it's a it's a great thing for the other person as well as for yourself, I think. And I think sometimes just seeing it from that other point of view, just sort of, for me anyway, just sort of releases that sort of blockage sometimes. It, it, that's right. And even if they don't have the answers, sometimes in articulating the questions, you also help frame the solution. Yeah, absolutely. What does your future look like? <laughs> Uh, I will keep going flat out, <laughs> or uh, or as uh, I heard uh, uh, a friend say, I'm going to ride this wave until it's a ripple. Uh, <laughs> you know, I I was reading not so long ago about people as they age and are uh, nearing retirement age, and I'm actually uh, well past retirement age. Uh, but if you're running a race, do you really want to slow down when you're near the goal? Uh, and I think for me, I, I never want to stop getting better. I might not be doing what I'm doing uh, for lots of reasons. I think when I've spent my uh, time and I've, I've made all the contributions I can, I should probably do something else. But it will always be something that I think makes me might, makes me better because the day the day good enough is good enough. For me, I might as well just go sit down. And I think that's true, isn't it? For so many people, they, you know, the idea of just working until you reach retirement and then you just sit around and do what I think. I think for those of us that are involved in in a career or a way of life or in education where you're sharing so many things, that 
you know, that doesn't change. It doesn't stop at a certain age. And I think, like you say, as long as there's the drive and as long as, you, like you say, you feel like you can contribute, then then why? Just because there's a, a, you know, a number put on us by somebody that says, actually, maybe it's time now to, to be doing something <laughs> well, else. Well, and it may, it may be time for me to go to something else, but I don't think I'll, I, I just, my, my personality, I have a lot of drive, I have a lot of energy. I'll probably never take my foot off the gas. Yeah, fantastic. What? podcast book video film song or any resource has had the biggest impact on your life and why well uh, uh, because i'm such an insatiable reader viewer singer (laughs) i can't think of one but that uh and i know it's 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 i love movies and that have those big cheesy emotional big finale song and dance routines <laughs> uh you know like in dirty dancing and uh, footloose or slumdog millionaire where you know where there was just this big it all came together at the end and everybody was excited and happy uh and and it has an impact on my life because i think you know that's how it ought to be we should all be you know dancing and jubilant at the end of the story. Uh, uh, there was a movie not long ago or some time ago about the Jamaican bobsled team. Mm-hmm. So here you have this unlikely group of fellas that are in Canada uh, because they wanted to be in the Olympics. And then their equipment broke down at the very end. And, you know, but they had such passion and such heart and uh, the equipment broke down at the very end. And then you, 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 you know, the viewer doesn't see them. And then at the very end, they come out and they're carrying their sled. And I, you know, I just think that's such chills to, to see something through to the very end. Uh, and ex- and even when you know you've lost, you still see it through. So that's, you know, those are the things that impact me because I think that's how everything should end. Yeah, I love that. That that film is certainly one that's been in our house many times. And like I say, we we love that ending well, and and also the fact that we're we're big sort of um, music theatre fans here as well. So there's all those big ends as well as some of the other songs that go through whichever film or, or theatre production happens to be um, the key for us at the moment. You know, there's lots of singing and dancing around the house like that. And like I say, right. why why not sing and dance now if you can do it? So you know, make the right. most of those things. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> For those people who've been, you know, really impacted by our conversation and the things that you're doing over there in Florida, could you give us some details of where they can find out more things and find out more about you? Uh, Well, certainly they can go to um, uwf.edu, and that's the university's website, and it has... um, uh, the president's page, lots of stuff about the university and what we're doing. I'm also on LinkedIn, Martha D. Saunders, uh, and uh, Twitter and Facebook, also Martha D. Saunders. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Martha, for sharing your wisdom and allowing us to learn from your wonderful experiences. Well, thank you. Thank you for listening to the Learning on Fire podcast. Remember to keep up to date with everything that's happening on the Education on Fire podcast network. You can sign up at educationonfire.com and enter your details to receive the latest information and episodes on the newsletter. If you enjoyed this episode, please tell your friends. The more we share, the more help and inspiration we can provide. Education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire.